Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the listeners around the world listening to my podcast, which is called Long Walk to Reasoning, a voice message to black people around the world. And by the way, this is my first podcast, and the title for this episode is called The Bending Kingdom and the Stolen African Artifacts. We may not hear about this particular story, especially during the Black History Month, let alone in schools. So before I get right into it, I will read my copyright disclaimer 107. Copyright disclaimer of Section 107 of Copyright Act 1976, allowing is made for fair use purposes such as criticism, comic news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be a fission. So I will get right into it with the title for this episode, my first episode. The title is called The Bending Kingdom and the Stolen Artifacts. Bending City, Nigeria, was one of the greatest cities and country in Africa, even to this day, the Bindi Kingdom with Edo people. Bindi in Africa was very artistic and a very beautiful culture of bronze, gold, diamonds, food, and the list goes on. The kingdom was ruled by Oba, known as a king, you know, in plain English. Around the 15th century, Benin traded with the European with sources, let me rephrase, resources like ivy, pepper, palm oil, cloth, and so on. The European was very amazed by the beauty and the discipline of the African people and kingdom, and this may possibly lead to envy and jealousy. Some may agree and some may disagree, but as the saying goes, action speaks for itself. The kingdom of Benin was a very independent country in Africa, especially from the British and the European control. So just keep in mind that there was repeated attempt by the British to invade Benin kingdom, but it was always unsuccessful. A couple of centuries later, you know, according to, you know, my little research, in the 19th century, the Benin Kingdom was being pressured by Vice Consul James Robert Phillips and Captain Galway, and they're always trying to find a way to remove Oba, you know, the king. And the king, or you could say Oba at the time, was all... Van Wen Wen No Baski. I hope I pronounced the name right. So around 1896, Vice Consul James Robert Phillips' weapon was hidden in the baggage with troops disguised as barriers. You know, some say that Mr. Phillips, you know, James Robert Phillips pretended to negotiate. Some people say, or at least in the African history, it said it was a deception. Open messengers issued several warnings not to violate the Benin territory. So, seriously, Oba was unable to see Philip. At some point, Philip sent his stick to Oba, which is, was an assault. So, there was like several versions of it, but regardless what it was, Philip did some kind of form of the show. The whole point I'm trying to say is that Phillips was doing a strategy, a strategy to set a, a trap and provoke and justify the action of terror and colonizing the country after the fact. But we will get right into it. So when Philip men were being disrespectful and assault, and so forth, their men was ambushed. And according to different versions of the story, two Philip's men were killed 
or two British men survive. This is like how, how we can say it. The whole point is that Philip was trying to, let me rephrase his name, Vice Consul Jane Robert Phillips, you know, so, you know, we could be on the same page. The whole point is he tried to attack and conquer. So when they insulted the old boy at the same time attack, the Benin men strike force, you know, to the barriers, to the invaders. And with the basic common sense, this was a self-defense. After the men was killed or those who survived, this was led to impuntative expedition by the British with 1,200 men, you know, justifying the attack of terror and colonizing the country. So it seems that Vice Consul Jane Robert Phillips sacrificed his men so they can attempt to conquer Benin City, Nigeria. So once 1,200 British men arrived to Benin City, Nigeria, next thing you know, Benin Kingdom was basically burned to the ground. The beauty and the wealth of the city disappeared. Of course, their bronzes was looted. Some people say that at least 3,000 of the Benin bronzes were stolen. I think it was more than that. So they were stolen and brought back to London around 1897. And this was the indication of what the Nigerian lost to British colonialism. With these stolen Benin bronzes, it's sitting right in London Museum. I believe it's called British Museum, if I'm correct. And according to the research and what other people say or so forth, they have about approximately 900 pieces. So that is roughly around 1,000 pieces. And we have other countries too. You know, other parts of country in Europe, definitely in the U.S. too. Take, for example, New York City. I believe there's some in um, Baltimore. So here's the question, you know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves in the black community and in, in African countries too as well, what can we do to request to return the stolen African artifacts? And I stumbled to this article by this veteran name, I can't pronounce his name, I believe it is Oman Kwa. He's the chief expedition officer of National Museum in Benin City. And this is what he said, keeping them abroad is like holding our ancestors hostage. That was a very powerful statement and let that sink in for a few seconds. And I will repeat it one more time. Keeping them abroad is like holding our ancestors hostage. The past few years, several European countries and Nigeria have been working on a plan to return the stolen African artifacts, especially for the Benin city. Keep in mind, this was stolen about a century ago. Now we in 2021. And there was something else I read recently by a curator named Chris Springs. And I believe he worked at the British Museum and I think he retired and I think he's roughly around 70 years old. And this is something what he mentioned. He says that it would be positive to see loans of warrior Benin works to Nigeria and possibly return certain pieces. So when you say certain pieces, is that sending back the less value and they keep the higher value? We do not know. But if I had to guess, that may be the case. And there was another statement, or you could say what he quoted, but in this day and age in the multicultural society, a total reparation of all those objects would be an act of vandalism in its own right. And also, he said, 
it would be deep fiving so many millions of people of those extraordinary histories. To me, that is considered an assault and being very selfish, in my opinion. So you mean to tell me your ancestors pretty much invaded Benin City, Nigeria. I'm pretty sure people was killed. The kingdom was gone. And they stole everything and they brought back to Europe. And you have it in your museum for the last decades, you could say 10 decades, so that make it a century or even longer. And the people felt that their artifact is holding hatches, but you saying that sending the whole thing back to Africa is an act of vandalism, but that doesn't make sense because the vandalism start in the first place by the British soldiers and Phillips. Another possibility too as well is that even If, hypothetically speaking, they did send all the artifacts, most likely they were not sent all, but even if they did send all, where the museum will lose its value of people attending the museum to see the African arts, that's a good possibility. Or he was holding on to something that he treasures, even though he's not holding on to it physically, But let's say London holding on to it because just imagine someone stole something from someone and that person asked for it back. The person who stole it, it would be hard for them to give it up. So what are some of the ways that we can request to get it back? It's the man protesting and so forth. And, you know, going through with the... uh, I don't know what's the word, you know, working with the Congress or working with the president of the countries and so forth, but it has to be some form of negotiation going on and so forth. And according to my research, it was, but there was a lot of delays and a lot of setbacks and a lot of hesitation and so forth. But progress are being made to this thing. But how long do we have to wait? But regardless, we still have to speak up continuously, no matter what, and never give up. And another thing that I just want to mention, too, is that let's say someone stole something from you a few years ago, and then one day you went to a store that you never went to, and you saw the same exact item that was belonged to you, but they have it on display and it's not on sale. How would you feel? Some people say they will feel insulted, disrespected, holding our possession hostage, the list goes on. And speaking of London Museum with at least 900 Benin pieces, artifacts, and the title says, Discovery of the Benin Art by the West. So how that can be a discovery when it was stolen in the first place? I think that title should be rephrased. Or at least, you know, another word, re Something like the stolen Benin arts by the West or the massacre of the Benin Kingdom by the West or your opinions. The history is right there. It's available everywhere, you know, online, on books, and so forth. But this is something that a lot of people don't discuss about, that it was stolen and it was never returned back to the black communities in Africa especially Benin City, Nigeria. According to Quartz Africa, Birgrim has about 180,000 African artifacts. Germany has about 75,000 African artifacts. France has about 70,000 artifacts. England has about 69. So earlier of this podcast, I mentioned it was about 900. So that's a big gap right there, you know, with England from 900 to 69. So let's say it is 69. Austria has about 37. So roughly it's about 437 stolen African artifacts that is sitting in Europe right now. So if you want to round it off, that's about 400 
and 40,000. Just keep in mind that Nigeria has requested 5,000 artifacts from France. France are saying it's their property. Don't be surprised other European countries saying the same thing too as well. Like I said a little earlier, when a person steals something from someone, are they willing to give it up? Most likely it's no. So we as the black people have to fight to get it back. Not saying fight physically, but fighting through the laws and the legislation and the protests and the demanding and so forth. So it's not always about being physical, but it's about being mental and playing the cards right. So roughly around 2018, the French president Emmanuel Macron said, in the next five years, I want the condition to be met for the temporary or permanent restitution of African heritage to Africa. The question is where he will keep up his promises or his word. We don't know. But if you read between the line of the sentences, He said temporary or permanent. If you put two or two together, permanent would not be the first choice. Obviously, temporary will be the first choice because if you're using the word temporary, it's somewhat a form of a loan. Like, okay, we will loan you this for a certain period of time, but after that, you will have to turn it back. So how will we feel that something that belonged to us and they're telling us that we are loaning to you, after that, you have to return it back? People around the world are very amazed of black arts, culture, music, traditions. Some of them love it so much, they would take it and say it's theirs. But even if it's in in their possession, they could never do what we can do, you know, hypothetically speaking. But the whole point is, is that the African artifacts that are sitting in a lot of countries around the world belong to us. And these are our legendsies and to this day they hold in our legendsy hostages. I'm pretty sure other countries you know have their legendsies but why do you have to hold on to ours? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves these questions. There are other several countries you know in Europe is willing to loan. I guess that's the word temporary while the negotiation continues. Roughly around November 2020 the French lawmakers agreed to return the African art to Benin and Senegal in small numbers, when it's supposed to be around 90,000. But even if it was a small number, that's the first step. And when that first step comes, obviously we'll be demanding more because it belonged to us. And don't forget, there's a new museum in Benin, Nigeria, called Indo Museum of West African art and check it out. And also check out the Restoration Trust and the British Museum. You know, they've been collaboration on working together, had the partnership, and I believe they received some funding of roughly around three million pounds. So we will see. And you know, we're in the middle of the pandemic and we're in 2021 and we will see. Hopefully we will see something now in years to come. So that's pretty much it for my first podcast and let me know what you think about it and don't forget to leave a comment suggestion and so forth so thank you to listening to my podcast which is called Bending Kingdom and the Stolen African Artifacts